WatchOS 26 Developer Beta 8 is out, and I gotta say, this one took longer than ever to actually get it to install because I kept getting this error right here that said, unable to check for update. An error occurred while checking for a software update. I'd hit try again a million different times, but nothing would really work out. So it was very weird, not really sure what was going on there, but after about an hour, hour and a half, I was finally able to get it installed. Now, Public Beta 5 is still not out yet. It'll probably be out tomorrow, which is Tuesday or Wednesday at the latest. But let's go ahead and take a quick look right here. So if we go into the settings app, go under general, go into about, the build number on this one is 23R5350A. So once again, this is another build that ends with A. The last two have also ended with A. So this is a good indicator that we're at the final stretch. Like we are almost there. Another great indicator is the actual file size. This came in at 272 megabytes. So that is a really, really small update. So we'll talk more about when I think the release candidate and the final release we'll actually have access to those. But I did want to talk about the blood oxygen sensor again. So now I've been sleeping with it for almost a week now. As I mentioned in my last video, if you did catch that one, if you did not, the Vitals app does not show your blood oxygen at all. And I was really hoping that eventually it would show it on the phone. So far it hasn't. Now I may have one more sleep before that data will actually show up. So if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button because I will be updating you all as soon as I know whether or not that's going to work. So basically just a reminder, this only affects us in the U.S. If you're outside of the U.S. or you bought a watch from outside of the U.S., the blood oxygen sensor should work fine like how it always has. If you're inside of the U.S. and you have a Series 9 or Ultra 2 or newer that were purchased after January 2024. So if you have one of those, the 9 or the Ultra 2 that was purchased before January 2024, you're still good. It's going to continue working the way it always has. So if you have a watch that you purchased after 2024, or even if you sent your watch in and you're in the US, you sent it into Apple to have it repaired, that sensor does get disabled. So basically how it works for everybody that has one of those newer watches is you can come in here, you can start a reading. It takes 15 seconds to do a reading. Once it finishes this reading, it then sends that info to your iPhone. So we'll just give it five, four, three, two, one. All right, so that reading is complete. So now I can come in here, I go to my iPhone, I wait a second, there it comes through. I tap on that and then it will tell me the latest reading. If you don't like this way, you can go into the search, go to respiratory and it will tell you your latest reading. So you can see at 601, I had a reading of 98%. So that's all good, not too bad, but I have a better solution if Apple approves it. I've developed an app that basically connects to the iPhone, grabs that info, and brings it back to the watch. I'll show you it real quick. It's a very simple app. It's called O2 Buddy. So right here it is. I also have, that's just the complication, but there's the little icon. I click on it and you can see right there, 601, 98%. So it automatically syncs through, but it seems to work really well. I'm still tinkering with it. It's not approved yet. I have to get it through Apple's approval process. They did approve it through TestFlight. So if you don't know, TestFlight is a way for to beta test an app and it has to go through a review process even to be through that. And I sent it in and Apple did. They made me make a video on it, but they did approve it. So that's a good sign. I'm going to submit it tonight or tomorrow and I'll have the link down below if it does get approved. I'll have the status of it down below. Whether it gets approved or not, you'll be able to find out right down there. So the app will be 99 cents because, you know, it was some time to put it all together and get everything. And also the money does come and helps the channel. Everything gets reinvested into the channel. So what else is new in watchOS 26? Well, we have a new workout interface if you haven't seen that yet. So basically you can just scroll through your most recent workouts. It's really nice. You can see up to three, but as soon as you stop, you get to that one and you have the play button, you have the music button, and then you also have like notifications and everything right here. Now we also have workout buddy. So if you go to like an outdoor walk,
Walk, you can get access to Workout Buddy if you have an iPhone 15 Pro or newer. So 15 Pro, any 16 lineup, it has to support the Apple intelligence. It's kind of annoying, but that's just how it works. It uses AI, I guess, or Apple intelligence is what Apple calls it, to actually like grab the data and speak everything. There are three different voices. There's two female and one male voice, and they basically just give you info about your workout and past workout info as well. Like if this walk was the longest walk you've done, it kind of tells you all that kind of stuff. It also will refer to the music that you're listening to, and that you can either select yourself or you can have Apple Intelligence pick it for you. I gotta say, it's worked really well for me. Everybody may have different opinions on that. Another new app on the Apple Watch is the Notes app. So now we finally have notes on the Apple Watch, which is great. I love being able to take quick notes on the Apple Watch. You can just tap right there, start taking a note. Let me just tap it one more time. So right now I have it in the scribble effect, but you can do it as a speak to text. So all that works well. Once you hit done, it automatically adds that note to your note list and you can access that on your phone, on your Mac, however you want to access it and add to it or whatever. So Notes app has been really nice to have. With iOS 26, we got that whole glass interface. Watch OS has some, it's not as heavy, I would say, as everything else, but we do have some. The lock screen, if I can get to it, let's go ahead. So give it a second, it should pop up. So the lock screen does have a little bit more of a glass look to it. Now this has gotten a lot of mixed reviews so far. Some people really like it and some people are not fans at all. And the notification center recently has gotten some more glass look. You can see, see how you can see right through the glass on there. So that one looks really good. You have to have a lot of color behind you to really tell. If your watch face isn't very colorful, you're probably not gonna be able to see much there. But also the control center got a nice update. You can see a little bit of that glass look as well right there. But more so than that, the control center is getting a lot more powerful. So basically we now have the ability to add our own control items and third party developers can actually develop for it as well. So you got all Apple ones up top and then as you scroll down, you're gonna get the third party ones. There's not much there right now. These basically work just like how it does on the iPhone with the control center. And that's what these ones are so far. All these ones actually trigger stuff on the iPhone. So I'm looking forward to once we can do more with all Apple Watch, but you know, the Apple ones do work so far with the Apple Watch. So you can see right here, I got a reminders and I have the note one. So I can tap right there, it launches the reminder and it automatically will start listening to type out my reminder. So it's really cool. I love how it works. I hit done and now that's being set as a reminder for me for later. So I am really enjoying the updates that are coming to the control center and I know they're gonna get even better. Now watch faces have gotten a little bit of updates but not much. So let me see if I can get to the photo face. So the photo face got a little bit more of a glass look to it. Now this is not all that we're gonna have. Apple will release more watch faces in either the release candidate or the final version. So we will see more watch faces. Just You just gotta wait for those. But they did add the second hand, the always on second hand and more. Now this is a series 10 only feature, but basically if I go in here and it takes a few tries, but eventually, there we go, the always on second hand. Oh, I got a notification, of course, worst timing. Swipe that down, go back into always on. You can see the second hand moving. Now they've added it to some, but not all watch faces. Obviously, Mickey Mouse isn't gonna tap his foot, which is a bummer. Now this one is the reflection one. This one's always had it. So we can just take a look right there. So that one's always had it, but we have more watch faces. Sadly, this is also one that is not supported. I really wish they would add it to this one. So I keep it on there just to check. This one, this is the solar analog. This one does have it. 
And then the Hermes watch faces. I think this is the only one of the Hermes that actually got it added. So I really wish they would add it to the rest. But, you know, it is still nice. I am glad that they added it to more watch faces because it was this really cool feature that the Series 10 had that they talked about how the display can update in just every second and it doesn't affect your battery life. And then they gave us like two real watch faces that actually worked with it for the whole year until the beta came out. We only had, I think it was really just two watch faces and one really old watch face that worked with it, but it just wasn't what it should have been. So I'm really glad they at least added it to some. I hope they continue to add it to the rest, but we'll just have to continue to wait to see if they do that. Now, I did take a look at Apple's release notes and nothing new has been added since the last beta they have. Tons of stuff in here, but all this stuff refers to stuff that they've given us in previous betas. There's nothing new in here from that. So basically, like I said, this was only 272 megabytes. So this update is just probably some security fixes and little tiny fixes that they didn't really feel like they had to mention. So what we're seeing here is basically what we're gonna get with the release candidate. I'm super excited. I've really enjoyed it. The battery life just continues to get better and better. I make it through like 36 hours pretty much no problem unless I'm doing the development on the app. That always takes more battery life than it should. But other than that, it's been working really well. It's right there at those final stages. The release candidate should be out probably September 9th is what everybody's saying is gonna be the Apple event. So a lot of times Apple will release the release candidate on that day or the next Monday. So we'll just have to kind of wait and see exactly when that falls into place. But then after that, usually within a week, it, the final version comes out. So not much longer before we all can have it on our devices without the worries of the beta problems. I hope you have enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. God bless.